All right, here we are at complex eigenvalues. Before we dive into this, I want to remind you of a couple things, a couple pieces that we'll need to put together here. Um, so let's just start again with the basic graphical idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So the basic idea is you have a matrix A and there's an eigenvector that you can multiply by A and it has the same effect as just multiplying that vector by a constant. Um, so graphically, and let's draw this in two dimensions, uh, if A, let's say A looks like this, uh, sorry, not A. If, if X, if X looks like this, um, then multiplying it by the matrix or multiplying it by the constant has the same effect. Uh, we do know that multiplying by a constant, a vector by a constant, all that does is lengthen it or shorten it or, or possibly flip it around in the other direction, but uh, ultimately it can't change the angle of the vector. It can just scale it, make it longer or shorter. Uh, so suppose that, you know, that lambda x then is going to have to look something like this, right? Maybe it makes it like one, two, three, three and a half times as long or something. So that could be lambda x and also the matrix times x. Um, and not all vectors work that way with a, right? There's lots of other vectors that maybe, you know, end up over here or down there or something that are off the line. But if it's an eigenvector, the matrix just lengthens or shortens it. Okay, so that's one idea. Um, another idea I want to take you back to is all the way back in chapter one when we were looking at transformations. And one of the ones that we got was the rotation transformation. You said, hey, if you've got a point and you multiply it by this matrix, that point will get rotated by this particular angle. Uh, so I'd like to point out that a rotation matrix has no eigenvectors. No real eigenvectors anyway. All right, because what would a rotation matrix do to any vector, any point, it never lengthens it or shortens it, it always just rotates it. Uh, so maybe let's take a look at a particular example. Um, well, let's just say 90 degrees. So if we're rotating 90 degrees, again, obviously that doesn't lengthen or shorten vectors, it just spins them around. So if your rotation is 90 degrees, um, then cosine of 90 degrees is 0, sine of 90 degrees uh, is 1. Uh, so there's the matrix that rotates 90 degrees. Let's look at what would happen if we tried to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues for this particular matrix. So the characteristic equation, uh, we know we'd have to subtract lambda from the main diagonal and then take the determinant. Uh, so the characteristic equation there, 0 minus lambda is just negative lambda. So negative lambda times negative lambda is lambda squared minus negative 1 to so plus 1. equals zero and there are no real solutions to that equation, right? If you keep going you get lambda squared equals negative one and if you really keep going uh, you get that lambda equals plus or minus square root of negative one. And again if we're looking for real eigenvalues it's game over. Right? There aren't any. If we're now allowing complex eigenvalues which we are now allowing complex eigenvalues. Uh, keep in mind that the definition of square root of negative one is this uh, symbol or letter, uh, it's kind of a lowercase i, the imaginary number. Um, so this thing does have two complex eigenvalues. 
and maybe has some complex eigenvectors, yes, <laughs> uh, that goes with it. Uh, so we can explore all of that. Uh, but to explore that a little more deeply, let's take a look at another example. And I want to actually start us off with one that has real uh, eigenvalues, just to review the process a little bit more. Uh, so this one is going to have real valued eigenvalues, uh, assuming I set it up right. So let's get the characteristic equation. It would be um, it would be two minus lambda negative six minus lambda minus nine equals zero. So that would be lambda squared six lambda minus two lambda is four lambda. And then minus 12, minus 9, so minus 21 equals 0. So you get lambda, what, plus 7 and lambda minus 3. So eigenvalues there are negative 7 and 3. Um, so that's fine. And just, Aside from just replacing the square root of negative 1 with i, this is exactly the same process as it would be when you find complex eigenvalues. Uh, let's go on now and actually find the eigenvectors as well. Uh, maybe let's just start with the negative 7. So keep in mind we subtract it from the main diagonal, augment with 0. So you get 0, 0 over here on the end. Uh, so 2 minus negative 7 is 9, 3, 3, and then um, negative 6 minus negative 7, negative 6 plus 7. Uh, why is my brain not working? Uh, negative 6 plus 7 is 1. There we go. And then we try to solve this thing, and the whole point of an eigenvalue is there is some solution besides just 0, 0, which means, especially in the case of a 2 by 2, uh, means a free variable, which means for a 2 by 2 that these two rows have to be multiples of each other. For a 2 by 2, there can only be one pivot if there's a free variable. Uh, and notice that did happen. We've got 9, 3 on the top. We've got 3, 1 on the bottom. They are multiples of each other. Uh, when you row reduce, you can do something like negative one-third of the top row added to the bottom row. So you get 9, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0. And if you want to keep row reducing, uh, I guess you could go... 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, or if you're really row reducing, you could go 1, 1 third, 0. But anyway, uh, at some point, you translate this back into saying this means 3x1 plus x2 equals 0, or more to the point, x1 equals negative 1 third of x2, and x2 equals x2. Oops, that's an x2, not x squared. And factor the x2 out, and I'm squeezing this way down here in the bottom, and you get negative one-third, one, any multiple of that for your eigenvector that goes with the eigenvalue of negative seven. The real big point, though, that I wanted to make here is that when you set up your augmented matrix that's a minus lambda i equals zero and solve uh, the two rows have to be multiples of each other otherwise you won't have a free variable i point that out uh, it doesn't really matter with real values because it's not that hard to row reduce but if you've ever done much arithmetic with imaginary numbers with the complex values the arithmetic gets not fun real quick and it's nice to be able to recognize that the second row is going to be a multiple of the first row, and it's automatically going to reduce to 0, 0, 0. So you can automatically just go with the first row. Uh, so let's take a look at 
one that does have complex eigenvalues and see if we can do this whole process. So again, uh, characteristic equation first. Here, I'll put it over here. We want 1 minus lambda, 7 minus lambda, uh, plus 10, equals 0. And let's see, multiplying things out, lambda squared minus 7 lambda, so minus 8 lambda, um, plus 7 plus uh, plus 7 plus 10 plus 17. You're like, okay, great. This is already not looking so good for factoring, and it's definitely not good for factoring. Um, so let's go ahead and do quadratic formula on this thing to try to solve it. So that would be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. A little simplification, 8 plus or minus um, 64 minus 4 times 17. Uh, 4 times 17, which is 68, so 60, oops, 64 minus 68, all over 2, so 8 plus or minus square root of negative 4, all over 2. And if it's been a little while since you've dealt with square roots of negative numbers, the process for handling those is to factor the negative and the number separately. So break it down into the square root of negative 1 times square root of 4 all over 2. Then you can handle the square root of the positive number just like you would normally. Uh, so this becomes what? 8 plus or minus i times 2. It's usually traditional, right? The 2 before the i. All over 2. Simplify a little bit more. Uh, factor a 2 out of the top, divide by the 2 in the bottom, and you get 4 plus or minus i. Okay, fantastic. We have complex eigenvalues. And we want to find the eigenvectors uh, that go with them. Uh, by the way, I should point out that complex eigenvalues always come in pairs because they come from this you know, solving the quadratic, and you get this plus or minus in them always. They're called complex conjugates, if you remember that word from your pre-calculus days. You don't really need to know that word now, but there it is as a bonus. Anyway, so we've got two complex eigenvalues. We've got 4 minus i, and we've got 4 plus i. Uh, let's just start with 4 plus i. And let's just set up the augmented matrix. So we've got 1 minus 4 plus i, negative 5, 0, 2, 7 minus 4 plus i, 0. And you can already see why it's more work right, to row reduce one of these things. Uh, we can at least simplify. That part's not bad. Let's distribute the minus sign on the diagonals here and get uh, 1 minus 4 is negative 3 minus i. Don't forget to distribute that part of the minus sign. Uh, so minus 5 and 0 and 2 and 7 minus 4 is 3 minus i and 0. And if you look at this, it's not immediately obvious how to row reduce further from here. You're like, what do I multiply the top row by to add it to the bottom row to clear out that 2? Uh, there is something. It can be done. And it will also clear out the 3 minus i. But as per our last example, we don't need to figure that out. We can just go straight with the top row, or the bottom row for that matter. They have the same information. Uh, whichever one seems easier to use, but I'll, I'll just use the top row and say let's translate this back. Negative 3 minus i <laughs> times x1 minus 5 times x2 equals 0. 
Um, the other equation will just say x2 equals x2 because that variable is free, but let's finish solving the first equation for x1. Uh, and division by a complex number can be simplified, and we'll do that in a second. But let's just finish out the eigenvalue, uh, sorry, the eigenvector here first. So x2 is the free variable, so there's our solution for the augmented equation, and the eigenvector is any multiple of. 5 over negative 3 minus i, 1. Any multiple of that. If you look in the back of the book, they will typically have rationalized the denominator. Keep in mind, i is a square root. So like any other denominator, that can be rationalized. And the uh, way to do that is to multiply um, well, we can either multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, or uh, in this case, we can just uh, choose x2 to be negative 3 minus i. So if we make that choice of x2, we'll get 5, and we'll cancel there, and negative 3 minus i. Um, so there's our complex eigenvector that goes with our complex eigenvalue of 4 plus i. A similar process uh, would find the other eigenvector for the other eigenvalue. However, um, since we know that eigenvalues come in pairs, complex conjugate pairs, it's true that eigenvectors do as well. The eigenvector for 4 minus i is going to turn out to be 5, negative 3, plus i. Um, and that's always true. It's, it's, the uh, change is always on the sign for the complex part. So notice the negative 3 stayed the same. It was just minus i there and plus i there. Same as it was in the eigenvalues, 4 plus i, 4 minus i. Okay, so we've at least walked through the mechanics of how to find a complex eigenvalue and how to find complex eigenvector. We should talk a little bit more about why and what that even tells us, but we'll save that for the next video.